This girl was one of the most attractive women on the planet at that time. She got an hourglass figure uh, and she always sort of exploited her bosoms whenever she could. If she got a lot of what they call the most. Jane's love affair with England had started way back in the 50s when she'd come over for premieres of her movies, but really she valued the fact that the fans over here in the UK had stuck by her. Hence the reason she decided to do a tour of Northern Clubs. We all realised that she had a great charisma, but not a particularly brilliant voice. But so did she. She was fully aware of that fact. I'll promise her everything, everything grand. We really wanted to look like her. We bought the kind of dresses she wore, if we could afford them, and we wanted her look. She was the Cheryl Cole, maybe, of her day. Oh, gee, given the opportunity, there isn't a gal in town who wouldn't say when I'm strolling down. Jane Mansfield at Armley Prison in Yorkshire was something else. Apparently she went on stage and said, do you want to see my chihuahuas? And then, whoa, there was a big hoot from the crowd and then somebody brought the two dogs out from the back. When she came on, the stage used to go down and she'd start singing and she'd just walk around and all men would be mouths open. She wanted to recite poetry. She could speak Shakespeare without a book. She played the violin. She spoke five languages fluently. What kind of a girl do you think I am? Later on, I would very much like to do the role of Blanche Dubois in Streetcar Named Desire. On the stage or in another movie? Either, either. I don't care. The medium, I think, is, is uh, very secondary to the role. Jane was just a great personality. She was just the blonde bombshell. I think every woman of my generation owes quite a lot to Jane Mansfield and the way she was so glamorous. We all wanted to be just like her. And you know, we really do miss her.